Uh, joining me now, I want to bring in as we look at these pictures again. This is just moments ago, another bus of migrants arriving in New York City. Uh, let's bring in Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn. And Senator, it's always great to have you on the show. Obviously, you're a member of Judiciary, Armed Services, you. Veteran Affairs, Commerce. You're a very busy lady on Capitol Hill. So talk to me about the policy now, because I know that there's a lot of discussion that if Republicans take back the House in November in the midterms, that one of the things that your party wants to look at and investigate is the absolute mishandling of the border crisis. Oh, absolutely. First of all, we have to be certain that we secure that border and get the situation under control. You know, Cheryl, for 30 years, the Border Patrol agents have told us they need a barrier, which is a wall. They need to have better technology. They need more agents. Those three things they have repeatedly said. And because President Trump moved forward on the wall, which had had bipartisan support, all of a sudden, the Democrats had said, no, let's open the border. You cannot secure that southern border unless you put that barrier to, to stop that entry. And I think it's important, Cheryl, to realize that our foreign policy and our domestic policy meet there at that southern border because it is a foreign policy issue when you have people from 150 different countries coming across that border and known terrorists coming across that border. The human trafficking, the drug trafficking that is taking place, the way people, these young women and girls are having their lives destroyed because they're put into sex trafficking rings. This border should be secured. Yeah, and, and we've seen multiple reports and reporting over the last couple of months about the fact that a lot of these children that we've been seeing were basically rented out by cartels in, yes. and gangs, uh, not just in, in Mexico, but also in some of the, the southern countries. Uh, I want to move on to the scandal, mm -hmm. the, another FBI scandal. Uh, we've lost count how many, but you've got this top FBI agent facing accusations of political bias and the handling of Hunter Biden's laptop. That agent, now out of the agency, Timothy Tebow, was reporting escorted out of the Washington field office on Friday after, quote, resigning from his post. There was a letter on July 18th to the FBI director. It came from Chuck Grassley, citing two whistleblowers who claim high-ranking officials, including Tebow, were actually <laughs> suppressing information and not following guidelines to open an investigation into Hunter Biden. Your reaction? When the FBI became a politicized agency, it started to, um, people started to distrust what they were doing. Now, there are some really good FBI agents. The majority of FBI agents are effective, they're good, and they keep their commitment, their integrity. Many of them have become whistleblowers and have revealed information to Senator Grassley and to us there at the Judiciary Committee. They have raised their concerns. But when you have a political cabal inside the FBI agency that is deciding whether they're going to push forward information or suppress other information. And Cheryl, we saw this with the Russia collusion hoax. Of course, I asked Christopher Ray about that when he came before us at our oversight committee hearing earlier this month. When you have them deciding to suppress the information on Hunter Biden and about his laptop and even going to Facebook and saying you might want to be wary of this. And we don't know if they went to the other social media platforms or not, but that is something we'll be able to investigate and find out exactly who all is involved in this political cabal. and. Each and every one of them that have decided to use their position at the FBI to, to push forward a political agenda, they should be removed and allow the good, honest, trustworthy agents who work hard every day to protect our citizens, allow them to do their job.
Senator, it's Joe Concha. Do you plan on having Director Ray yeah. back on Capitol Hill to answer these questions, particularly one that I found troubling is what you just mentioned, going to Facebook right after the New York Post reported the Hunter Biden laptop story and saying, yeah, you really should be wary of this. How could they have possibly have done any sort of real investigation when the story had just came out days before and how would they know that it was Russian disinformation just like that to the point where they had to warn the largest social media company in the world? Uh, it's it's amazing. And of course, we're going to invite him to come back. And Joe, remember when he came before us earlier in August, he had to leave by 1.30. You know, so we didn't get that second round of questions. So we had a partial hearing, if you will. Everybody got one round of questions, but not that opportunity to do that deeper dive into an area where during your first round of questions, uh, I, something may have come up. So, of course, we have extensive questions for response that have been submitted for writing, but it is going to be important for us to bring him back to say, how did you all participate in this? Who made the decision that social media needed to be warned? And who made the decision that the laptop which you have in your possession that you were not going to investigate these allegations, that you were not going to push forward with this investigation and not make this apparent uh, to, to the other agents to do their part of an investigation. I mean, we've got a lot of a lot of entangled processes here that people want to know why did you make these decisions and say this is not important and we're just going to sit on it yeah well i mean and you and your committee your fellow republicans you had seen and i think this is obviously what, what prompted uh grassley to, to put this forward to say look you know the social media activity of this agent and, and again i'm glad you point that out there's a lot of amazing agents at the yeah. fbi but you know the concern now that this yes. department has been Politicized. Before before I let you go, though, uh, the yes. president's Department of Justice is claiming it's already reviewed the documents seized from former President Trump's home. DOJ says a limited set of documents that are potentially protected by attorney-client privilege were identified, were taken. Senator, your reaction? Uh, you know, this is such an unprecedented move, what they have done to former President Trump, Mrs. Trump, and Mar-a-Lago. This has never happened before. They went in with that broad-ranging search, anything from 2017 to 2021, and they scooped it all up, and now they've been able to review, and obviously they've had eyes on these documents. That that should have been protected with attorney client privilege and it is unseemly. I, I this is so unsettling to Tennesseans that I talk to every single day. They repeatedly say if they can do this to Donald Trump, they could do it to me. And with 87,000 new IRS agents coming on board, people are very unsettled about this loss of privacy and protection. Senator Marsha Blackburn, it's always great to speak with you, Senator. Thank you so much for being here. Good to see you. Thank you.